welcome and for those who haven't been here before, welcome, I'm really happy you're here. I'm very excited to be making this new video, it's been a while and I've been putting my heart and my soul and all my time into decorating our new home and it's long overdue to make a new plate so I've decided to use the concept and the technique of the white and black plate that I've made in my first video and to try something else by using Iret Claws and I will be probably be using it in my kitchen so I want it to be food safe but as we all know if you put clear glass on top of other glass it will make it food safe but then also you have to put clear glass on top of oh, blah 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 clear glass on top of iron glass to protect the iron on it. So without any further ado, let's get into this one. First things first, my second glass of choice for the day is white opalescent which I checked and is food safe. I then play around with some ideas on paper but not having the necessary talent to draw by hand, I turn to my computer as I feel much more in control when drawing on my computer. It's quick and easy to just hit delete and here I have created a new pattern. After I've printed my pattern, I mark out the ports, which is going to be solid glass. This is just so I don't get confused. I then trace a line around one centimeter away from the outside line onto my paper pattern, which will be my cutting line for the clear glass. This is in order to create an overlay so the clear glass can melt over the iron glass on the sides and also so I can insert the white glass underneath the clear glass at the edges to fuse together. I then trace the pieces onto my clear glass and I then cut my clear glass. I'm not going to show too much glass cutting in this video as there already is a lot of glass cutting in my previous videos. I printed a second copy of the pattern and as you can see here that because I drew the lines around one centimeter away from the pattern lines that the claws no longer fit the paper pattern exactly. Therefore, I now use the cut clear claws to trace the lines onto the iron claws. I then draw the lines on the iron claws around one centimeter to the inside of the line traced from the clear claws in order for the iron claws to be one centimeter smaller than the clear claws. I could however from the get-go have traced the exact lines of the paper pattern onto the clear claws and then use those to trace onto the iron claws and then trace one centimeter to the inside of the iron claws to create a cutting line. But this is how we learn trial and error. Both pieces of claws should however fit exactly on top of each other at the rim of the circle. I then fit my claws on top of each other. As you can see I broke the claws where I had a very deep cut but I've decided to leave it as it is. As long as the other layer of gloss overlaps this piece, the gloss will fuse together. Normally I would cut a new piece of gloss, but I decided I will see how this will come out. I furthermore run into the problem of having cut both pieces of gloss basically the same size at this deep end. Trying to find ways of fixing rather than cutting new gloss, I decided to trace this part onto paper and to cut a piece of clear gloss to fit into this space. For perfection, rather recut the gloss, but this project is also about experimenting and learning for myself and to see what happens and how will it come out. I want the white gloss to be straight lines, so I decided to use my extra paper pattern for this. I trace the white parts onto the paper pattern and mark them out so I don't get confused. I then measure out and mark lines onto the paper pattern. One centimeter width for the gloss and half a centimeter for in between. To make it easier for me to cut the pieces, I mark cutting lines to first cut out smaller pieces from the white, cut them out and trace them onto the white gloss. After cutting the white gloss, I ensure that they fit properly in between the iron gloss and then I draw the cutting lines onto these pieces of white gloss. Make sure that when they are put together you have one centimeter gloss and then half a centimeter space in between 
the glow strips. It's difficult to get the strips to fit exactly and at the exact angle so using the cut paper pattern to make dots onto the thin fire paper so you can mark where they have to go and that helps a lot. The glass moved around so much when I tried to fit the strips in between the iron glass so I decided to prepare a kiln shelf. I put thin fire paper on it and I used some super glue, small drops of super glue to hold the pieces of glass in place. Next I place the clear glass on top of the iron glass and then it's ready to go into the oven for a full fuse. After the full fuse, I'm quite happy about how the iron came out. Further, I'm a bit in two minds, but I've decided that I will wait until after the slump to decide whether or not I'm happy with the outcome of this project. So I'm back and I ended up doing a voiceover for the entire video as when I made the plate I had flu or a cold or something and my voice just come and went as it wanted to. But yes, I have the plates and it turns out that I'm really quite happy with it. I'm happy with how the iron came out and it really surprised me. And even this little piece where I had the mishap of the patting of the gloss doesn't really bother me too much. So yes, I'm happy with it and more than what I thought that I would be. So happy days and thank you for watching.